In this presentation, I will talk about the valuation of debt securities. So, at a very simplistic level, the valuation of debt securities involves a three-step process. What's the three-step process? You first estimate your cash flows. Now, the perspective that you have is that you are an investor or you are considering an investment in a fixed income or a, or a debt security. So the first thing that you do is over your timeline 0, 1, 2, let's say you have a three year investment. So you estimate your cash flows for every year. Sometimes you might estimate on a yearly basis or on a six monthly basis. Most investments, most fixed income securities pay every six months. So each period can be a six month period. But nevertheless, you estimate your cash flows for every period. You figure out the appropriate discount rate to use and this discount rate obviously depends on the riskiness of the security. The more risks that are involved, the higher the discount rate. So that's part two and part three, you simply calculate the present value of the future cash flows based on the appropriate discount rate or appropriate discount rates. As you will see later, uh, at a simplistic level, you can discount all cash flows just using one rate, but more precise methods involve discounting future cash flows at a rate which is appropriate for every cash flow. More on this later. Now, from my previous slide, it might seem that estimating cash flows is easy. And based on most of the examples that you've seen so far and examples that you saw in FRA, cash flow estimation was easy because we generally assumed a fixed coupon bond. We did not consider any sort of default risk. So in a fixed coupon bond, you basically have fixed payments for every period and then you get your par value at the end. So as long as there are no defaults, you can be pretty sure of the cash flows that you are getting. However, in the real world, estimating cash flows is not so easy. And even if you ignore default risk for a, mo for a moment, there is uncertainty about the timing of principal cash flows. Why? As you have now studied, there might be bonds with embedded call options, there might be put options, amortizing securities might have uh, prepayment options, you might have uh, accelerated uh, sinking fund provisions and so on. Now, given all these embedded options, you are not even going to be sure. So given the if a bond has a call option or a put option, then you are not sure about the timing of the principal cash flows. So if a call option, so let's say a bond has par value of 100 and is callable at 102. Now, if the, if the bond is held till maturity, then at the end of, let's say, the five-year period for the bond, you will get your par value back of 100. But let's say interest rates go down, then it is possible that you get a value of 102 earlier. So clearly, the timing of the cash flows is uncertain. What about coupon payments? If you have a, a floating rate security, then obviously the coupon payments are tied to the coupon payments are tied to a benchmark rate such as kybor or libor and hence even though you know the timing of your cash flows but there is uncertainty about the amount of the cash flow and finally if you hold a convertible bond which can say be converted into a certain number of options or can be converted into as in more likely can be converted into the stock of the issuing company then there is uncertainty about what cash flow you will get so the point of this slide is to highlight the fact that in the real world there might be several issues which make the estimation of cash flows somewhat difficult now fortunately for you in level one as long as you know that there is difficulty that's all you need to know and in level two we will worry about how to value uh, such bonds where there is uncertainty about the timing or the amount of uh, cash flows 
Now let's go through a series of simple examples that talk about valuing a bond and hopefully this material should not look very difficult to you. You might have seen this in other presentations. So start with the simplest possible example where you have a bond that matures in four years. It has a par value of 1000, coupon rate of 8% and we'll use a discount rate of 10%. The first thing that you should notice here is that the discount rate is more than the coupon rate. So that means that this is a discount bond. So the price that you get should be lower than par value. Now, the next thing you do is you should quickly create the timeline. So our timeline has four periods. In our simple example here, each period is a year and what we are getting is $80 at the end of year one, $80 coupon at the end of year two and as a quick recap how did we get this 80? 80 means 8% which is the coupon rate 8% of par so we get four coupons worth 80 actually one two three four okay so four coupons worth 80 plus you get your principal of thousand back at the end and to calculate the price or the value of the bond we simply discount all these back you can do this the long-winded way by discounting each cash flow at 10 percent which is the appropriate discount rate but you should not do that on the exam because this will take too long so instead you do it the quick way on your calculator take n is equal to 4 because we have 4 periods the interest rate that you use is this 10 percent discount rate which is the appropriate rate for this bond the payments are equal to 80 the future value is equal to 1000 and then you compute your PV the answer that you should get is minus 936.6 and remember since these are plugged in as positive numbers this present value will be a negative number if you are unclear about the sign convention then you need to look at the quant videos one more time but nevertheless so the price of the bond based on this simple calculation should be about 93.936.6 now let's look at a semi annual pay bond most bonds make coupon payments twice a year and this bond is almost exactly like the previous one but this has coupon payments that are made every six months so for this bond now we will actually have a total of eight periods so you have zero one two three and then periods in between and then period number eight and the convention with a semi-annual pay bond is that the coupon rate is stated in bond equivalent yield or on an annualized basis so if it's eight percent for the year then for every six months the coupon rate is four percent now what does this mean so eight, so now for every coupon payment you take four percent of thousand so the coupon payments are 40 and you get your principal of thousand back at the end how do you value this you value this based on a discount rate of 10 percent now again this discount rate is quoted on a bond equivalent yield basis which means that 10 percent is for a one year period and for a six month period the yield is half of 10 percent which is five percent so in your calculator you now plug in eight periods an interest rate per period of 5%, a payment of 40, a future value of 1000, and then you again compute the present value, and the number that you should get is 935.36. Notice that this number is slightly lower than the number that we got on the earlier slide, which was about 936 why is this number lower the number is lower because here we are using a bond equivalent yield of 10 percent which means that every six months we have a yield of five percent so if the six month yield is five percent then the effective annual yield is actually a little more than ten percent 
So since the effective yield is a little more than 10% for this bond, that is why the present value will be a little lower than what we got on the earlier slide. In the earlier slide, we had assumed that the effective annual rate is 10%. This is a subtle point that I made at the end. If you got it, great. If you don't, if you did not get it, don't worry too much about that point. Okay. So how does price change as the maturity of a bond approaches? And you've seen this picture in financial reporting also. Let's look at maturity or as we approach maturity on the x-axis and the price or value of the bond on the y-axis. In my example, we are looking at a four-year bond. So, I'm sorry. So, this is, that's time zero. This is time one, two, three, four. And what we, and let's say this is par value. Now, the bond that we just looked at had four years to maturity. It was a discount bond. And at this point, we have four years to maturity. So with four years to maturity, the value of the bond was 930, about 935. So this par value is 1000. The point is this, that for a discount bond with four years to maturity, let's say that our YTM here was equal to 10% stated in bond equivalent yield basis. So with a YTM of 10%, with four years to maturity, the present value is 935. Now, one year later, uh, actually, let me just go to the extreme first. Just as the bond is about to mature, then the value of the bond will become par. Why? Because if the bond is about to mature, the, the if somebody buys that bond, he is going to get only the $1,000 par value. So if he's going to get the $1,000 par value, the present value of 1000 is 1000 So in four years time, the bond will value will go up to 1000 assuming that uh, YTM stays constant. So if YTM stays constant over the four years, the value of the bond will move like this. So it will decline, I'm sorry, the value of the bond will increase all the way up to par value and this will be a smooth movement as long as YTM does not stay the same. What is the value of the bond after one year? After one year you simply say okay after one year you simply say what are the future cash flows and you discount those future cash flows at a rate of 10% and you will get a number that is a little more than 935. If you have trouble understanding what I'm saying, then actually do this example. Then at the two year mark, again calculate the price and at the two year mark, you will again look at the future cash flows, which is cash flows for the next two years, discount at 10% and you will get this price. Same, similarly, do the, do the same thing at the end of year three and at the end of year four, the only cash flow that, uh, that uh, we are left with uh, is the par value. So the value comes down to, uh, the value comes back up to 1000. Bottom line, for a discount bond, as long as the YTM is not changing, the value of the bond smoothly moves up from 935 to 1000. Now, what if we had a premium bond? With a premium bond, let's say the YTM was equal to 5%. So if YTM is 5% and coupon rate is 8%, then the initial price of the bond will be more than par value. But over time, the value of this bond will come down to par. So this is the movement over time for a bond that is initially issued at a premium. Now let's talk about valuing a zero coupon bond. So if you have a thousand dollar par value zero coupon bond, which matures in four years and has a discount rate of 10%. Now, unless you are told otherwise, you generally assume that the discount rate given is given in terms of a bond equivalent yield, which means that for a six month period, the rate is 5%. 
so for a bond that matures in four years the number of periods is equal to eight the payment is equal to zero because there are no payments in a zero coupon bond the interest rate is the rate for every six month period which is five percent the future value is equal to thousand and you simply compute the present value based on plugging in this data and obviously this is a zero coupon bond so it has to be a discount bond and the present value has to be less than thousand so you plug in these numbers and you should get the present value of the zero coupon bond now how do you deal with the amortizing security let's say you have an amortizing security with the annual cash flow of 3000 and let's say that this is a five year amortizing security and you are given that um, that the appropriate interest rate or the yield for this bond is 6% how what's the simplest way of solving this problem the way you can look at it is you have five periods so 0 1 2 3 4 5 and for simplicity we are saying that every year there is a payment of 3000 and normally with amortizing securities there can be prepayments but that will make this example difficult at level one we don't want to introduce that difficulty so we are simply going to say that there are no prepayments if there are no prepayments and you are getting effectively 3000 every year for five years what is the value of this bond and again this ties back to material that you studied in quant effectively what we have here is uh, annuity and how can you find the present value of this annuity there is an annuity formula but you don't need to know that however you need to know how to use your calculator so we plug in n is equal to 5 because we have 5 periods we plug in an annual interest rate of 6% we plug in payment equal to 3 we plug in future value is 0 why 0 because we simply have these payments of 3 all along there is no other payment that comes in at the end that's why future value is 0 and then based on this data you simply compute your present value and that is the value of the bond